Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. We're going to be doing a southern yellow jacket mess that has made its way into a compost pile. And the homeowner here does gardening and has to do some stuff to his shed here. So, unfortunately, these girls got to go. Um, as you can see, I haven't done anything yet. They're already swarming me. So, we're going to get to it show you guys how it's done. All right, so as you can see here, I decided to get some close-up shots of where this um, entranceway was. So this was a compost pile that the guy had made. Um, it was a raised compost pile. So there were slat boards, and in between the two bottom boards is where they started to go in. And this particular species makes their nuts very indicative with the entranceway with envelope. Kind of so whether or not they're in the ground or they're in space, they always cake envelope to the entranceway. So that's a really good identifier for this particular species. So you can see here, this is you know pretty well caked up, um, and it usually has like almost like a tunnel right into the nest. So you can see down there, I hadn't even done anything yet. I literally just showed up there and just kind of like start getting stuff in place. I didn't even put the I didn't even put the vacuum there yet, and they had just one came up and swung up to me, and and that was it. So you can see why this would be something he would have to have removed. Um, he had been gone on business for a couple weeks, he said, and by the time he came back, um, he was ready to do some repair work on the, the shed that was like two feet to my left, and, um, and he wanted to start using his compost pile, so um, it was time for them to go before he got his butt handed to him. So, um, so this particular species acts very similar to like how bald-faced hornet does when they attack. Um, they actually fly out and then they kind of swarm the, the, uh, the culprit of the uh, swarm, and then they fly back to the nest. Um, like, eastern yellow jackets won't do that. They will literally fly out, and they'll just keep swarming and swarming and swarming, and they won't go right back to the nest. And that, that's where it kind of becomes a pain in the butt to, uh, to do these removals for that particular species, because they'll just stay swarming until you spray them. So, luckily for these guys, you can see that the numbers die down. As they stop swarming me, they go right back to the hole, and then they get sucked up in the vacuum. So these boards are kind of set up in like a slat format, so it just had to be, these boards just had to be slid up, and I could see an area there. So as I started to trim back the soil, it was very apparent that the position of the nest as it is now was not how it was initially built. Um, and I do kind of slow down some footage later on, and you kind of see what I'm talking about, but um, the cavity was higher, like maybe four inches higher than where the nest was sitting. So it led me to believe that um, the nest was in a position and that at one point had fallen from that position, had become detached and fallen down into the hole and then was then continued to be built from that um, settled position. So I don't know if maybe like the, the compost had settled at one point and, you know, or even when it was drying, maybe it shrunk and it kind of like broke the attachments or something, but... So you kind of see here where it's kind of like sitting down cockeyed. See how the the envel or the um, the comb are vertical, and this species makes their comb like horizontal to the ground or parallel to the ground um, in a horizontal fashion. So the fact that they're they're vertical is an, another indicator that this nest has since uh, left its original perch. So in between these two, these three cells that they made for this compost pile, um, there's like a wire mesh, and uh, they were even building like cake and envelope to that wire mesh and getting into that that middle bay, and, uh, and flying around in there too. So I didn't really want to spray anything in here, but have it being a compost pile. Um, you know, he was trying to make most of his uh, vegetables and things organic. So I really didn't want to contaminate that much by spraying black flag back in there. Um, I did kind of batten down the numbers once I got the the slats back in place. But so I tried to pull this thing up, and the, I mean it was just so wedged in there. And it, since it had fallen down and gotten um, in a different position, it was really difficult to get out in one piece. So I just kind of uh, broke off a couple pieces of the comb, and um, was finally able to pull it out in a nice big chunk. So you kind of see here, now I do slow this down so you can see it too, um, but there's the queen there. Um, and you see her crawl around. Now I thought that was the only queen. Well, it turns out that these this is actually a new queen. 
So once the new queens start to hatch, the other, the original queen dies, and um, so you kind of get an idea uh, that there were several new queens in this in this uh, colony. So they were getting ready to to fly off and start a new a new uh, colony the following season. My upcoming video, I'm going to be going over the uh, going over the process of start to finish how a colony starts and maintains and all that um, so you'll see one extra item in there that bag is actually a bald faced hornet nest that I relocated so I just had it in the same tub with this nest This is pretty much what I do with the, all my nests when I bring them home. I break them apart and I vacuum up the adults that are still in there. There was quite a few hatched queens. Um, so I sucked everybody up that I could. I did save several queens um, to, to uh, release just because this species is another beneficial wasp species. Even though it's, it was in a, a problematic spot, it doesn't mean that they're not beneficial. So check out the just the jumble of comb in this nest. It's really bizarre how that they formed everything. So when I slow this down, I can kind of address some of these layers and let you know like what what this actually means to me, what it looks like to me. So this is the last patio that was built. There was one other couple little combs on top of that, but this is the last main part that was at the bottom of the, of the hole. But then up here, this is all just jumbled mess. So I think that that was the original nest that had fallen down in the hole, and then they just kind of just you know manipulated the rest of the comb to fit however that sat in the hole itself. Really, really interesting. And you can kind of see too. There's some spots where there's some rocks, um, and I think I show that in a little bit here once I start breaking it apart. But you can see how the, the, they're really close together, which is not common and they're also just like in, in weird layering and in weird positions. So interesting to see how they um, adapted to a catastrophe of the nest falling within the cavity and corrected that so they could continue to flourish the rest of the season. So there's just some new queen or new um, adults that were had recent, recently hatched. You can tell them by their slight like pale coloration and also that they're not they're not flying they won't be able to fly for two days at least so they kind of just crawl around the inside of the cone tend to larva and uh, dry out their wings so they can start flying within a day or so A couple cool little rock spots there. A couple of rock spots that were uh, built around as they dug out through the compost. This is really interesting. Oftentimes, people ask me like how to save these nests um, to actually like use them for decoration and things. You can do that with them. Um, the problem is is that there's a lot of larva in between the layers, and without the colony continuing those larvae will just die in there and they rot and stink and everything else um, so the only way really to preserve them is to let the nest either finish out and um, and let the, the workers tend to all those larvae um, but I mean for what I'm doing I, I feed the larvae to my chickens and to my now opossums and um, and squirrel so um, I take them apart and some of it I tweeze out, tweeze them out for the squirrel. Um, I give the whole nest to the chickens and to the uh, and to the uh, the possums because they'll pretty much just handle them the way they are, which you'll see here in a couple seconds. So Ducky and Amber, you can tell that they uh, they got the hang of pecking out of the comb. And people ask too why Ducky seems like she's bigger than Amber, and it's just because she's older. 
she was from a different a different hatching. So she's probably a couple beep, weeks beep, older beep, than Amber. Beep, 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 beep. Chicken. Hi, Amber. They both have very distinct and cute vocalizations. Ducky has some cute little trills that she does, and uh, I'm sorry, Amber. And Ducky has some some cute little chirps. Amber, you gotta learn to peck more out of there. So interesting enough here, that new queen that hatched out, they, Ducky picked her up and put her in the water, and they like pecked her down into the water. It looked intentional, I mean you can rewind it and look at it, I rewound it about 17 times, and it looks like she intentionally, whenever it was crawling around, she intentionally like pecked at it, but she had no interest in eating it, she just like wanted to like, min like move it off of where she was. Like see, she moves that comb out of the way, and then she goes to it, and she pecks it. And then at one point she kind of flicks her head and it flies across the bin and lands over in their food dish. Yeah, right there. Now it's over there. Again, she doesn't look like she's going to eat it. She just wanted it away from where she was eating. Very interesting hey, instincts. But I did remove that clean from there and put her back in the bin. Sorry for the shaky camera work. I wasn't using the uh, the gimbal. I was using just the regular handheld. Just trying to get some close-up shots. So here's the other two girls. The cute little possums. Anne and Margaret. And um, just wanted to give you guys some close-up of them eating the, out of the comb. I'm not going to do too much voiceover over this spot because I want you guys to hear how they eat. And they're not really eating anything crunchy, but for whatever reason, when possums chew, they are uh, they have a crunching sound. And I don't know if it's their teeth or, or what, but it's really, really interesting and kind of almost creepy. But uh, take notice of how they get the, um, the larva out of the cells. They kind of drag their bottom teeth across the comb and like like scoop it or shovel it and then they kind of pick it out. See, there's, there's little tiny teeth right in the front of their uh, bottom mandible that uh, that kind of like picks the larva out or the adults out of the out of the comb. And then they kind of like move their head back and forth a bunch of times until they get it out. Nothing went to waste. When they're done with these, these nests, there is nothing in those cells. I mean, absolutely nothing. There's no remnants, nothing. So they do a really, really good job. Even better than the chickens, I think. And their cute little fingers and their nails. And these are wild animals. Like these are not domesticated. They're not, I mean, they still hiss at me when I come in. They still play their possum, um, meaning that they, uh, they kind of play dead. Um, so they're wild animals. These guys will be released. And uh, there's been some talk in the comments and things that um, they won't they won't want to leave me and this and that, but they're gonna want to leave me. They they didn't know me as mommy, so um, they still they still become defensive when I come in, um, even though I'm the one feeding them. But I'm under no delusion that they uh, they want to be with me. So um, to give them the best life possible is to let them go and do their natural thing out in the wild. And uh, so that's what I'll be doing. It'll be hard for me, but not so much hard for them. They're, I'll still be feeding them wasp larvae and things out in, out in the wild, just like I do with their, uh, their relatives that are running around my property right now. I know I promised to stop talking, but you're not really going to hear it now. So. <laughs>
Very, very messy creatures, though, that's for sure. They don't really, I mean, other than their bed, there's really no, like, designated spot to poop or anything. They just, as you can see, it's just strewn out through there. And they like to poop in their water dish, which is really annoying. Yes, I'm a huge Beatles fan. I mean, huge. My favorite song, album, and movie are all the same title. It's Help. Thanks for asking, folks. You can hear the influence in my music. <laughs> but there's sweet little Humphrey. Doing really good. He is also a wild animal. He is not domesticated. He knows me as mama, but eventually he will leave mama due to instinct. Almost. <laughs> you almost made it in. You all done? Okay. I know you're tired. It's bedtime for a squirrely squirrel. Here, let's see if this works. There. It's bedtime for a squirrely squirrel. Say goodnight to everybody on YouTube. Say goodnight here. You like this. Show everybody how you like to be scratched across your face. <laughs> how about a belly rub? Good old squirrely squirrel. Good old squirrely squirrel. Alright. Just look at everybody in the camera once. Everybody's coming to see you, squirrely squirrel. Little Humphrey. <laughs> I know you don't know what to make of that. Alright. Come on, little squirrely squirrel. Go back, scratch, squirrely squirrel. Oh, squirrely squirrel. Hey, I'm free. He's choosing to go in my pocket. Go ahead. You're a good squirrel. <laughs> it's a good squirrely squirrel. Hey, squirrely squirrel. One of these cameras is getting his rub down.
see his little neck scratched. Don't you squirrely squirrel. Don't you squirrely squirrel. He's a good boy. Want this nut? You want this nut? Eat this nut. Alright, go in the pocket. Go ahead. <laughs> Alright everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments, let me know what you think. If you guys have any ideas for any future videos you guys would like to see, drop in the comments and let me know. Um, I always like to hear what you guys like and what you guys want to see. I'm going to be doing a Q&A video coming up, kind of uh, carpet bond with some footage that I haven't included in any of my other videos. Um, so if there's any questions you'd like to ask me, how I got started, what career I have done before doing this, how I got into doing YouTube slash Hornet King stuff, um, anything, just uh, shoot a comment, let me know. Um, I'm going to be putting that together here in the next week or so. Thanks you so much for subscribing and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.